this episode, things get slippery. Freezes immediately on the glass. Spit on it. Yeah, spit on it. I'm going to have to focus stack this because I'm very close to this foreground. We are chasing waterfalls today. If it's safe, and it probably isn't. Definitely not safe. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. He's a thief. Is he a shot shark? He's a right bugger, I tell you. I was just checking it out. Where did you go? Nowhere. Absolutely beautiful. I put Vaseline on it. It's a vaso filter. My equipment is becoming non-functional. There's nowhere else I'd rather be right now. Yeah. yeah. Can you dip this in some water and clean off the lights for me? Dip that in water? Yeah, they're all dirty. There's no water. Well, just get it wet. But clean your lights, all right. Weird. Oh God, these are filthy. Yeah, yeah, just spit on it. Spit on it. Yeah. Yeah. Spit on it. Yeah. Yeah, spit on it. With the Ranger wagon ready to hit the road, we began our landscape photography adventure in a fairy tale winter wonderland. About every four years, Vancouver Island experiences an Arctic blast. And while this is a major annoyance for most people, for idiots like us, it's a golden opportunity. It's that weird time of the year that's in between Christmas and New Year where you don't know what day it is or who you even are or what you're supposed to be doing. But what I am doing today is hiking through a beautiful snow-filled forest with Grumpatius and uh, Colin. And uh, we are chasing waterfalls today. So we decided to visit this place called Englishman River Falls. And I have struggled with this place for years. I've never really got a shot that I was happy with, but the times that I've come close, it's always been during winter. And this winter, we've had a quite unusual amount of snow. It's been about minus seven Celsius for the last four or five days, which is not that common in the Vancouver Island winters. And I love it because of all this spectacular ice that you see, all these ice formations around the edge of the waterfalls. It's really quite gorgeous, but it's also quite complicated and messy, especially with all of the snow covering everything. You'd think it would simplify things, but it's still quite complicated. So I'm gonna give up on this particular spot because Grumpatius is busy getting the same old shot that he always takes when he comes here. That doesn't excite me all that much. What I'm going to do is head off into the forest there because I came here about a month ago before everything froze. And one thing that I noticed was there were such heavy rains that these cliffs had these sort of little temporary cascades pouring over those cliffs. As you can see right there, that's frozen. And just a little bit further into the forest, there's some more interesting cliffs with nice moss and rock formations. So I'm gonna go into there and see if I can find something more small and intimate. I mean, this is great. It's really grand and impressive, but there's so much, it's so complicated. It's just a big chaotic mess. So I'm gonna go further in, see if I can find something a little bit simpler, a little more intimate, and maybe shoot with a longer focal length. So I'll pack up my stuff and head in. Oh yeah, so this, this is what I was hoping to find. Hopefully you can see it in the frame there. So the last time I came through here, obviously this was all liquid. There was no ice, there was no snow. So this was just like a curtain of water. It was just dripping down over this cliff. And this is what I was hoping for. I was hoping to see that curtain of water turned into a curtain of ice. These chandeliers are just spectacular and I've got the added bonus of a Reflexion there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it work. I certainly don't want to get taties deep in this ice cold water. Because if I do, that'll be the end of my day. Which I'm prepared to do, but the shot's got to be worth it. So <laughs> maybe I will, maybe I won't. If I do, it'll be the very last thing I do today before we head home. Oh, 
press I've done a couple of test shots and I have surmised that I really do need to get closer because I think the biggest feature here is that reflexion it's so beautiful so I want these chandeliers reflected in this beautiful mirror pond I have to get closer and so <laughs> that's always the problem when you're, you're dealing with snow is if I get closer and walk down there well that's it my footprints are in that shot I mean I, I can always get rid of them in Photoshop but it's a pain in the ass so it's an executive decision but I think that's what I'm going to have to do so I'm going to get down there get right into the water and see if I can get a nice reflexion shot even if it means footprints so let's have a look I absolutely love these arctic blasts and the photo opportunities they afford. So let me show you this first shot that I framed up. Okay, well, it's kind of difficult for me to show you this on the back of the camera because then I really would have to just get in the creek, which I don't want to do just yet. Like I said, maybe later at the end of the day. So basically I've got the camera in the water, fairly low to the surface of the water to get as much of that reflection as I can. So the shot is okay. I don't think it'll be a portfolio piece, but I'm gonna shoot it anyway, maybe study it on playback and see if it gives me some ideas. So even though I don't think it's an absolute belter, here's this shot. I think this is one of those shots that, even though it has interesting subjects, it doesn't quite hit the mark. Hmm, time to look for something different. So here's a useful little tip for you, if you're ever lucky enough to get conditions like this, and you're photographing ice, especially chandeliers like this, or pillars or columns of ice, and that is, if it's safe, and it probably isn't, but I'm an idiot so I just do it anyway, get behind the ice and try and use these columns as a nice frame to look out towards the scene so i haven't tried it yet but i can see there's a couple of little gaps there in this ice there so i'm going to get behind which is pretty easy i'll just crawl behind in this overhang and just see how it looks from the inside looking out so let's get in there see if that works and if it's good then i'll get the camera in Well, I don't know if it works as a shot, but it's quite interesting. It's really, really beautiful. What I might do is I'll just flip this round. Instead of going for like a super wide shot, what I might do is, you see these, these formations here? I might just focus on that with maybe the 55 and have shallow depths of field so that everything behind it is blurred out. And really the shot is just about these columns and how they attach to the ground. But as I said, you know, don't do what I do because I'm just... A, bloody idiot now this is definitely not safe <laughs> but I'm gonna do it anyway oh Jesus oh god right I don't know if you can see me but basically I have to lie on my chest to try and get this shot because I want to get really close to these chandeliers pillars columns I don't know what you would call them so I'm using the 55 because it gives me great shallow depth of field at f1.8 that's my plan anyway but it's quite a tight composition oh that is that is quite gorgeous actually so it's too tight for the tripod it's just too uncomfortable i've basically got my chest on the icy floor and it's just melting it's just melting the ice underneath my body but whatever it's worth it oh that is quite juicy oh so i'm just taking these handheld shots and they're just really tight shallow depths of field macro almost macros of this ice formation because it's just it's just this beautiful transient piece of art that nature creates once a year if you're lucky maybe once every four years so handheld it is so <laughs> i'll do a few shots i'll get closer and closer move a bit further back unfortunately that tripod <laughs> with that camera on is in my background but i'm shooting at 1.8 so it's blurred out in fact i'll just shoot a little bit of video so you see what i'm dealing with so this is 
how it looks and if I just angle up there a little bit you can just see the tripod in the background so I'm actually going to have to get back out of the cave get rid of the tripod and then retake the shot and my nipples are completely soaked in icy water So I moved the tripod out of the shot and then crawled back in the cave like a troll. All right, I'm gonna get back into this wet, wet floor for you guys to get this shot. Right, let's try it again. Oh, that's beautiful. That is so nice. This was definitely an improvement over that first shot, but I knew I could do better. Oh man, that was uncomfortable. Oh, my neck, my knees and my nipples. Not very pleasant. Anyway, I'm glad to be out of that hole. So what I think I'll do now is go a bit further down this little creek and see if I can find any more of these columns. Maybe there's some more interesting shots to be had, perhaps with a better background so that I can use the opening as a frame to look out at something else. This didn't quite work for that because there really wasn't that much to look at. It's kind of a complicated mess in the background, which is probably gonna be further down, but we'll go and have a look, see what we can find. And it's been about an hour since I left uh, Grumpton and Collins, so they're probably wondering where the hell I am. So I'll see if I can spy them in the distance. I'm sure they're, they're really worried about my safety. And so the hunt for a strong composition intensified, but would I find exactly what I was looking for? So I found something quite interesting, but not that photogenic. I really love this root. So I'm guessing that this root is attached to one of these trees up on this cliff edge, and they just sprawl, clinging onto anything that they can get, get hold of, just to get a foothold to keep living. So I love how it kind of creeps down this crack in the wall and then at the bottom there you've got all of this ice forming on the bottom and that's right next to this column of ice but try as I might I can't quite line things up in a pleasing way it's so complicated but I have spied over here an interesting little cave mouth I'll show you this well this is kind of interesting Again, I'm trying to use something as a frame to look through to something else, but really all I'm looking through out there is some ugly roots. It's kind of a mess. So, this is actually even more challenging than just forest photography. You know, that cliche of trying to find order in all of that chaos. This is even more chaotic and messy, but there's got to be something. There's got to be a gem hidden in all of this. Do you, know, do you know what I really love? Is when you go to a place of outstanding natural beauty. Is when someone sprays some shite on the wall. It always makes it look better. I'm so thankful. Get a good shot? Yeah, real good. Did you enjoy working with Uncle Grumpy down here? Yo, yeah, maybe a little, but not really. Did he do what he usually does with me? He's a thief. Is he a shot shark? A shot shark, yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, here he comes. Did you make the mistake of showing him your shot? No, I, I knew he was just going to steal it. <laughs> he does. <laughs> He's a right bugger, I tell you. Colin was saying that you you were just over where he got his shot. Just wondering what you were doing down there. I was just checking it out. Yeah? You weren't, you weren't stealing it, were you? No, I wouldn't steal it. I wouldn't do that. Okay. Where did you go? No way. No way. There's you, nothing around there. You, no, there's nothing around. You wouldn't like it. No, I wouldn't. It's rubbish. Did you see the neat thing I was photographing? Those branches down there. I saw those, yeah. They're very cool. I know this tight guy, he's, he, he went after it. Oh, did he pinch your shot? He did. I was going to get a stick and whack him a few times. <laughs> Destroy it so that no one else yeah, can get it. No, I think he had his eye on him before I got there, but I was too quick for him. All right, well, should we 
grab a bite to eat and then if we've got time, if there's enough daylight, maybe try one last waterfall somewhere on the way home. Sure. Yeah? Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, right, let's pack. Let's, let's do it. it. Let's do it. So we got back into the Fanta Chariot of Destiny with one specific location in mind. So we're heading off towards uh, a spot called Wiener Falls near Sprout Lake on the Alberni Highway. And Grumpton and I have shot there before in the spring and the summer, but never in the winter. But we're hoping that it's frozen or semi-frozen. What do you think the chances are, Grumpatious? Oh, I don't know, man. 50-50? I mean, the lake back there wasn't even, didn't have any ice on it, did it? No, but that's a super windy lake, so. The, the problem with this location is it's way out there. So, and the days are short. We don't have much sunlight, much daylight. So if we go here, it's a gamble because we won't be able to do pretty much anything else. So we're back on the trail, heading to Wiener Falls. And someone's done a nice little, uh, sign a little map back there which i'll have to take a clip of and it would appear that the only one we've ever been to is little wiener falls apparently according to the map there's a there's a big wiener falls have you have you have you taken in the big wiener no, little wiener is good enough for me yeah you, you're okay with the little one yeah. oh i don't know if i can handle the big wiener yeah but now that i know that there is a big wiener you're a bit of a weenie yourself, aren't you? <laughs> a bit of one. <laughs> so I reckon we're on the, the right path. I can see some footprints, even though they're covered over with fresh snow, but you can just see them. Oh God, snow down the back of my neck. I hate that. <laughs> oh, I can hear a waterfall. We're almost there. Is it gonna be any good though? Can you hear that? Should be able to. Let's see, first glimpse. Ooh. Ooh, yeah! And with that first glimpse of the falls, I knew that my chances of capturing a great shot had just increased tenfold. All we had to do now was climb down the ice-crusted cliff of doom. Right, so this climb is so sketchy, I hate having such a massive camera bag on my back when I need balance on icy cliffs. So I'm just going to slide this down to Colin and hope that he catches it with his face. So. so that's the bag. That's Colin. Good catch. <laughs> graceful, very graceful. So we made it down to almost the, the base of the waterfall and it is spectacular. But it's so icy, really I should have had my uh, spikes on my, my cleats for the climb down because everything was covered in ice, even the rope was quite sketchy. Um, but see all this ice down here? So these are the surfaces that we're going to be crawling all over. You see Colin right down there. So what I've done, I kind of anticipated this, so I brought these. So these are going to go on my boots right now and uh, hopefully that'll give you some better grip and less chance of a horrific death so i'll get those on and then i'll uh, i'll get composition hunting quite excited about this with the grace dexterity and flexibility of a teenage ballerina i donned my micro spikes and i was ready for action what do you think that looks good i like it that is beautiful yeah We've got to try and resist the urge, the three of us, because it's real tight quarters, to just jump in to the scene. Because I can already see some compositions that I think I want. But if I stand there, number one, I'm in everybody else's shot. And, you know, you need a wide angle lens to fit me in. And also, if I trample all over the snow, we're going to piss each other off with the footprints. So what we've decided to do is try and kind of work together in a line and slowly work our way closer and closer to the waterfall and that way we don't have to worry about no. footprints no. oh you're not you're not agreeing to that i didn't agree to that no. it's ridiculous. i think you should do a bit of vim hof and get in there naked 
Who? I think you should. Get out that little wiener, a little wiener falls. <laughs> oh, that's why it's called. That'll be micro wiener. <laughs> So I found my first composition. I'm quite happy with it, but it requires me to be uh, standing in the water, which it's not. It's not too bad. These boots are supposedly waterproof. I've yet to find a boot that is actually waterproof. But the spikes are good because they give me about an extra half inch of height, which kind of lifts me out of the water ever so slightly. Probably won't make much difference by the end of the day. But anyway. Let me show you this composition. I'm really quite happy with it. So I'll show you what I've framed up. So hopefully you can see this. I'll try and keep as still as I can. So what I tend to do with waterfall shots, whether they're spring, summer or winter, it doesn't matter. I tend to not have anything above the top of the waterfall. I don't like the triangle of pointlessness and that little bit of empty sky. So I almost always crop the frame to just exclude the very top of the waterfall and just feature the main column of the waterfall as it enters the center of the frame. What I really like is all of these foreground elements. So you've got this lovely sheet of ice on the right of the frame, which has this really interesting little arm that kind of curves into the center. And then in the very foreground here, you've got this little bit of white water. And then the opposite side of the bank, you've got, again, more ice and all these snow covered trees and these columns of ice down the side. So there's a lot going on to suck your eye into the center of the frame. Now if you want to learn how I process my images, be sure to check out my course Photoshop for Morons. No, I'm not taking the piss, that's actually what it's called. There's a link in the description. So I'm just going to wait for Colin to, to finish with his shot now, because he's in a fairly similar spot to where I was, but I don't think he's too keen on getting in the river. And then once he's finished, I'm going to move forward to that spot there, where we've got this little curve of ice and uh, hopefully that, that way we don't get in each other's shot. And that's the beauty of this type of photography. It's a totally overcast day. He can take his sweet time, there's no rush. I don't care how long he takes because we can just take our sweet time and just work our way towards the waterfall and not worry about the light. So that's kind of a, a you got the luxury of time. I do enjoy that. Oh, it's finished, right, let's move ahead. All right, so now I'm uh, crouched on this lift of the edge of the river. Let's switch this round to show you. So it's all about this curve. I really love this curve. But I tried to do a horizontal frame featuring the waterfall and that curve. It didn't really work. So now I've gone vertical to try and get this composition to work. So let me just get a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see this. It's kind of, there's a lot of glare on this screen so I don't know if it's gonna work, but obviously you can see I would say a good 45% of the foreground is taken up with this curving shape. I would have preferred it to be a little bit more to the right, but if I did that, there'd be just nothing in this area here. Now what I've done is I've used a circular polarizer to cut through the glare on the water, so at least on this half of the frame, you can see those rocks in the foreground. So that is the bottom half of my frame, and then the top half is obviously the waterfall and these ice-covered trees and these rocks. Pretty simple, but I think it's gonna work as a vertical. So if that turns out any good, here's a shot.
So I suspect that all three of us have our eye on the same element. So just on the other side there where Grumpton is headed, there's this, I guess it's just a bush that is completely covered in ice. And it's thick, it's like seven inches thick of twigs and branches just trapped in ice. And I love that. So where you can see Grumpton right now, I'm gonna try and head there pretty soon as well. Just get right close to those elements and use those as foreground elements to shoot towards the waterfall. And on the opposite side of the creek, you can see Colin there doing a kind of a similar thing. I don't know if there's as much interest there, but the ice formations are quite beautiful. So, uh, oh God, I'm glad Grumpton's got his spikes on. So I'm gonna head over there with Grumpton and work that, oh, work that side. Oh, shit, me thing. So I really love this shape that you get when you have ice that forms in a direction. I, I can't tell if it's, it's the wind coming from the waterfall there is blasting this direction and the ice is kind of going in that direction. I can't really tell, but I, I just love that. So this is what I just find so fascinating. I love this about ice. And you really do need these very, very cold temperatures. Five days or a week of minus three is not gonna cut it. But if you get minus seven, right down to minus 15 consecutively for about a week, that's when you get this stuff. And they're just, to me, these are just works of art, temporary works of art made by Mother Nature. And I absolutely love it. I mean, if I just move over here, just look at these textures, shapes. Just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. So I've just got to figure out a way to use that as my foreground and frame it up nicely. And I can see over there, Grumpton has spotted these other shapes that are kind of doing the same thing. So those look really cool as well. There's a lot to work with here. It's just going to require a little bit of finesse, a little bit of work, but we've got all day. I'm in no rush. Uh, there's nowhere else I'd rather be right now. Fantastic. I, I can see, however, that the sun has popped out somewhere and there's a bit of light up there. That, that could cause a problem if we're trying to get long exposures. I don't think I brought ND filters, so we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, I'll frame up a shot and then when I've found something good, I'll, uh, I'll try and explain that to you. So I framed up a pretty tasty composition, but the problem that I'm having, and I don't know if you can see it in this video, is the filter, and even if I take the filter off, the lens itself just gets completely coated in ice within seconds because I'm right in the line of all of the spray coming from the falls, which at this temperature freezes immediately on the glass. So you, you have just a few seconds to get the shot, but, um, Right now it's covered in ice, it's kind of foggy, but you'll still be able to see the composition. So I'm going to show you the back of the camera, explain the composition, and then I'm going to have to clean that filter, maybe put it in my pocket and melt it a bit, and then try and get the shot in earnest in maybe 15, 20 seconds, see if it works. But let me show you the back of the camera and I'll explain this shot. Okay, I'm hoping you can see this. So I'll brighten things up a little bit. So you can probably see straight away those, those ice particles stuck on the filter. What really interests me about this shot is this arrangement of ice formations off to the left, creating a really nice frame. Now I'm not in love with the way that everything just kind of slopes off into nothingness on the right of the frame. If I, if I darken this up a little bit, you'll see that this ledge here, it doesn't really hold that much interest. It's just a white ledge of ice. But that's what I've got. That's what I've got to work with. And so it's, it's you know, you, what choice have you got? Unless you're gonna do a composite, you just work with what you've got. But as you can see, this area here, it's just fascinating. Look at that. This, this is what I'm working with. But all of these cool ice formations, absolutely stunning. And then of course you have the waterfall off in the background. So th this, you can kind of see the composition right here, just on this video camera. It's, it's quite simple but I think very effective. So I'm looking forward to doing this. Now, I'm obviously I'm gonna to have to brighten it up. 
I'm going to have to focus stack this because I'm very close to this foreground. So I'll maybe do that in three or four shots. Then I'll focus on that ledge in the middle of the frame and then the background. Probably sticking at F11. And as for shutter speeds, it doesn't really matter what shutter speed I use for these foreground focus stacks. But when I do the background, I'll probably go for something like a quarter of a second. Just so that you get a little bit of motion blur in the water there. There's nothing going on in terms of the pool with white water, so I probably won't bother to play around with shutter speeds on that. So that is the, uh, that's the plan. That's the arrangement of shots that I think I'm going to have to take in order to create this. So if it turns out to be any good, here's a shot. So I think I've rinsed this spot in particular and now I've got my sights set on this spot over here where Grumpton is currently vlogging. I don't know if he's prepared to give it up or if he wants to swap but I really do need to get out of the line of this, uh, this spray because it can't be good for the camera at all. It's not too bad for the glass but for the actual mechanics, the electronics, not a good place for it to stay for too long. Okay, let's see if he'll swap. By this time, both myself and the gear were starting to struggle. So I'm on the other side of the, uh, the waterfall, the creek now, and it's quite tricky. It's just as bad. In fact, it might be a little bit worse on this side for the spray. Um, but what I found is the closer I get to this wall, the less of a problem the spray becomes. And I found these really cool ice formations here. So what I'm thinking of doing is, there's like a couple of sketchy steps here if I basically oh, climb up a little bit, um, I like this. So I'm kind of a bit higher looking down and featuring all of this in my foreground. And I might actually go with a vertical frame. And that way it's all about this in the right of the frame and then the waterfall itself in the left of the frame and hopefully they'll balance each other out. Um, so with the ice cleats on or the spikes, it's pretty easy for me to get up here and stand up here, but I, I don't know if the tripod is going to work. But I'll try it, we'll see, but it might be a bit sketchy. But as the ice took its toll, the pressure was on. My equipment is becoming non-functional. And basically the camera, the camera is still operating, but the lens is just instant fogging up and the tripod is just becoming useless and, and that's the problem when you shoot in these uh, damp humid but freezing cold conditions is it's not like shooting in the rockies where it's quite dry cold it's a really damp humid cold here and you, your tripod just seizes up even without the spray just the cold dampness at, at some point it's going to seize up but with the spray and with getting in and out of the river <laughs> it's just locked up and become useless. So I'm kind of screwed because I, I need the tripod for those long exposures. So I don't know what I'm going to have to do. Maybe I'll just uh, extend the legs and try and warm it up with my hands. But I'm starting to feel the chill now, I tell you. So where I was, I, I just had my tripod rigged up on this, this rock face here. It was so sketchy that I just couldn't film the back of the camera to explain the composition. It was really quite dangerous and um, I don't even know if the composition works to be quite honest with you because I was too focused on not dying but if it does turn out any good here's that shot
what a fantastic day we'd had in this frozen winter wonderland. Now, I don't know about you, but for shots like these, I'm willing to suffer untold discomforts, and I'll even do it with a smile on my face. It was time to rustle up the troops and see what kind of shots these guys have got. Did you get a good shot? I got a great shot, man. So good. Really? A really killer shot? Yeah, my uh, polarizer was covered in ice, so it's going to look good. Oh, for that extra icy effect. Yeah, yeah th they definitely work good. That is dreamy effect. Yeah, dreamy. It's uh, like putting Vaseline on it. It's a Vaso filter. Yeah, exactly. He's putting Vaseline on his micro wiener. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, if Colin's shot looks really good, here's his shot. Well, that's that's really quite uh, it's an exquisite uh, bit of intentional camera movement. All it needs is an 80% Orton effect. <laughs> that, that, that was shocking. So that was shockingly good. bad. That, that was I, no, I really love that dreamy uh, that dreamy Vaseline effect. It's yeah. quite special. In fact, there's quite a lot of that dreamy Vaseline effect going on in your jacket right now, Grumpton. <laughs> It's cold over there. It, yeah, it's the spray. The spray when it lands it on your jacket. It just freezes instantly. Yeah. My feet aren't that cold. No. <laughs> really. They're not that bad. Colin's got these uh, these winter boots that are as old as he is, or, or older. Probably older. Yeah. So the the insulation's probably lacking somewhat. Yeah, keep them in the freezer before I put them on. So <laughs> they remind me of those old uh, Kodiak boots. Remember those? Yeah, yeah. Those were good though. These are not. My tripod completely seized up. I can't. I can't do anything with it. So we'll have to get the blower going in your in your SUV. Yeah, yeah. You got some icy crystals on your fuzzy ball. Yeah. My, my dead cat is uh, is starting to get some formations going there. It adds to the sound. You know, like your exactly. filter did with the ice on it. it sounds cold. So I, I feel like I'm done. What What do you guys reckon? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, done. Little wiener is rinsed. <laughs> you've, you've rinsed your little wiener. <laughs> <laughs>